have our next set of presenters. We again, we have Dr. Marion Brawl and um, Brian Collins. Brian Collins is again is our Chief Operation Officer and uh, Miriam, our, our Chief Engineer. And the next project presentation is regarding the Freeman Diversion and a project that's uh, you know really interesting and in trying to capture that high turbidity water and put it to beneficial use. Uh, so with that, Brian. Thank you and hello again. And uh, I would like to take a break and just ask your permission. I, I loved your analogy of the circular firing squad and I, I uh, would like your permission to use that tomorrow in a meeting with the agencies, if that's okay. <laughs> well, I will nonetheless go ahead and plagiarize it and use it, so. So two years ago, we came to you with an idea, the idea about doubling the instantaneous diversion rates of the Freeman diversion from 375 CFS to 750 CFS. And this proposal or this discussion was about finding a balance between biology and water resources. This is no small task on the Santa Clara River. Those of you that are familiar with the Santa Clara River, it's one of the highest sediment laden rivers in the world. We're gonna go through some projects particulars today and talk about a major retrofit to potentially take advantage of increasing the instantaneous diversion rate of the Freeman diversion from 375 CFS to 750 CFS. But once again, just to drive home, to find that balance between the environmental and the water resources balance. So we've been working on a parallel path project, developing two different alternatives and modeling them. The first one that I'm gonna talk briefly about is our hardened ramp facility. We've been modeling this at the US Bureau of Reclamation in Denver at the Technical Service Center and draw your attention specifically to the desander elements. And uh, this concept enables us to be able to divert those higher rates of instantaneous diversions that historically we wouldn't have been able to touch because they would have been so laden with sediment and high turbidities. On a parallel path, halfway across the country in Iowa, we've been working on the vertical slot and the vertical slot has been coined by some as precedential, meaning that it's precedent has been set, it's been used throughout the, uh, the state. And uh, so we've been working with University of Iowa to do the physical modeling of the vertical slot alternative and I point out the desander elements in this. So we have a desander element in both of the parallel options going forward. So let's go through and talk a little bit about this. So here we have a drone looking down at the mighty Santa Clara in all of her glory, 23,000 cubic feet per second doing a great job at ocean recharge. That water, by the way, is so dirty that it isn't habitable for the fish to be able to swim up by and large. So what we're looking at is we're looking at options, as I said earlier, to increase our instantaneous diversion rate from 375 CFS to 750 CFS to take advantage of some of that chocolate milk water higher in the hydrograph while leaving some more of that water available lower in the hydrograph for the biology. So our current operations, as I mentioned, 375 cubic feet per second, that's our permit maximum. And it's also the project limitations. We struggle at that level to divert 375 CFS because we don't have a desander currently. So what we're talking about is developing a project, looking at changing the instantaneous diversion rate from 375 CFS to 750 CFS, to maintain yield neutrality and to provide that balance between biology and between water resources. Over the past two years, our engineers have developed and designed these desander projects, working to develop something that will work from an environmental perspective as well as a water resource perspective. And at this point, we have it, we have at least in miniature anyway. Here it is at a one to 24 overlaid looking directly over our drone. 
And what I'd like to do is to talk to you a little bit about some of the partners that we partnered with. And then we're gonna go through a video taking a look at some of the physical modeling at the University of Iowa. Iowa, and more specifically, Iowa Institute of Hydraulic Research has over a hundred years of physical modeling experience. They've built the one to 12 and the one to 24 scales for United. We consider ourselves fortunate to be able to partner with Dr. Weber, who's a full professor of civil and environmental engineering and currently stepped into the role as a director of IIHR. Additionally, he's the founder of the Iowa Flood Center, also the founder of the Iowa Nutrient Research Center. Dr. Weber is a special advisor to United and is an independent consultant to help guide United's hydraulic modeling and design efforts. Let's go on a journey and take a look at some of the physical modeling that we've recently been doing. As a matter of fact, they were there today finishing up the, the latest phase of this physical modeling. Welcome to the University of Iowa and IIHR Hydroscience and Engineering. I'm Larry Weber, Director of IIHR and Special Advisor to United Water on the Fish Passage Project at the Freeman Diversion. Today, uh, we're at the James Street Laboratory and I'm with Dr. Troy Lyons, the Principal Investigator of the Vertical Slot Alternative for the Vern Freeman Diversion Project. We're here on the 1 to 24 scale uh, laboratory model of the Freeman Diversion modeling a portion of the Santa Clara River as it flows into the Vern Freeman project. The model that we're uh, standing on has been designed in consultation with Stantec consultants, uh, United Water, uh, and um, myself. And we've been working on this project uh, for about the last uh, year and a half uh, here in the laboratory, working on design development of the new uh, fish passage alternative um, called the vertical slot. Today we have the model set up with 1,500 CFS of river flow uh, that's passing water and sediment uh, into the diversion area uh, of the project. A couple of the key features of the project are we have a spillway sluice uh, that I'm standing next to with an, with an apron and an approach channel that allows sediment and water to move down in a concentrated fashion, attracting fish to both the north and south entrances. Uh, we have some red and blue dye uh, coming down that you see, a blue dye uh, that was released along the left bank, red dye along the right bank. Uh, that uh, water comes in uh, to the diversion uh, along the training wall, uh, passing down through the spillway sluice way. The, the important feature of the project uh, design has been uh, to be able to increase diversion yield uh, during higher, more sediment laden uh, river conditions. So we have the diversion operating today with 750 CFS, which is double the current capacity of the Freeman Diversion Project. That will allow more water to be available uh, to irrigators, as well as for groundwater recharge uh, to protect the important Oxnard uh, Plain agricultural system. Additionally, um, to the 750 CFS of diversion, uh, we also have uh, uh, 300 CFS that is passing through our attraction water system. Uh, that water is then uh, returned uh, to the river through the south and north entrances to attract uh, adult uh, migrating Southern California steelhead uh, to those two entrances. Uh, and we still have an operable uh, flushing channel. Uh, the flushing channel's purpose is to be able to manage uh, sediments that deposit outside of the trash racks uh, so that we can keep an area uh, as clear and clean as possible accumulating sediments there, uh, operating the flushing channel under high river conditions uh, when, it, uh, when there are very few steelhead that are migrating upstream. Uh, so we have a, a very important feature for managing sediment that does not impact uh, the adult uh, migration of steelhead. And then we have a new feature at the project and that is the desander that will be used to manage sediments that um, do uh, pass in through the trash racks and deposit themselves on the intake. Key point, is we want to be able to divert more water under higher, more sediment laden river conditions. We want to manage sediment outside of the trash racks. And we also want to have a system that manages uh, sediment inside of the trash racks. Here we are at the diversion intake uh, with a better view of the desander and the flows as they enter into the dual V-screen system. As I said before, uh, the left uh, V-screen is 
um, set up for 750 CFS. Uh, that will provide water for surface water irrigation and groundwater recharge down in the Oxnard Plains. Uh, the right V screen is also designed for 750 CFS uh, to allow attraction water uh, to the uh, south and north fish ladder entrances. On the upper portion of the intake, we're looking at the desander, uh, six bays to the desander, a series of gates that we can close off the flow out of the, a single desander bay and allow a desanding operation. So Dr. Lyons has now uh, opened up uh, the lower level sluice bay. The water level is dropping in bay two of the desander. As the water level drops down and becomes critical or high velocity, it will start to uh, desand and entrap and entrain those sediments and, and clear that bay out. So with relatively little water uh, passed uh, to the downstream, we're now able to uh, quickly desand that bay. Uh, the water and the sediment are, are, are sweeping uh, that bay clean. Uh, once that bay is clean, then we'll go back to normal operations. And if necessary, would then advance across the desander system, cleaning individual bay by individual bay. Again, this is a very uh, well-designed system that allows United to manage sediments outside of the trash rack uh, with the spillway sluice and the flushing channel and manage accumulated sediments that have passed through the trash racks before they get to the dual V-screen system. Uh, this system uh, is uh, very unique uh, to United Water and the Freeman Diversion Project and should serve uh, United uh, well into the future. We're here at the downstream side of the Freeman Diversion Project and I want to point out a few of the features uh, that uh, are new to the project. And so we have a, a north uh, bay uh, entrance we have our south entrances. Uh, we now have our desander pipe uh, that's flushing uh, sediments downstream. And so the desander is outletting uh, both water and sediments uh, in an area that we can use the flushing channel and the spillway sluice to sweep those sediments uh, further downstream. As I'd mentioned earlier, uh, we have uh, currently 300 CFS of attraction water in the entrances. So we have our S1, S2, and S3 south entrance uh, gates with S2 being open and 150 CFS. We have an S4 and S5 entrances on the north wall of the south chamber, allowing additional flexibility for fish passage. On the north side, we have gates N1 and N2. Uh, N2 is currently operating at 150 CFS. And then again, for operational flexibility, an N3 gate uh, that is uh, projected to the north side of the north entrance bay. We have three uh, Obermeyer gates on our spillway sluiceway crest with 450, 450 CFS coming uh, over the spillway sluice presently. And so together you can see uh, we create a very good attraction flow here. So we'll have the staff release some dye. Uh, we'll have blue dye coming out of the south entrance and red dye coming out of the north entrance. Uh, so the dye comes out, provides a very distinguishable uh, jet downstream. That's enough dye. Uh, you can see that moving downstream Together with the 450 CFS of flow coming over the spillway sluice, uh, we have a very uh, pronounced flow going downstream uh, near the left bank, uh, attracting adults uh, that are moving up the river. Uh, as they swim into this area, uh, they find two acceptable entrances on both sides of the spillway sluice flow, uh, allowing them to uh, quickly find those entrances and move upstream through the vertical slot fish ladder. So overall, a very good system. Uh, we're very pleased uh, with both the upstream performance, the sediment management, uh, the uh, projected uh, fish passage of performance, and, and really believe that this is uh, a fantastic alternative for fish passage at the Freeman Diversion. On behalf of the entire IIHR modeling team that's been dedicated to the Freeman vertical slot diversion alternative, um, starting with Taylor Karstens, Priscilla Williams, Troy Lyons, and myself, we would like to thank United, its board, project sponsors, and partners throughout the Oxnard Plain for allowing us to help you create a sustainable, resilient water resource well into the future. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce my colleague, Dr. Miriam Brawl, and she's going to uh, take the next phase and talk about the conveyance from the Freeman Diversion. Thank you, Brian. So the um, purpose of the Freeman conveyance system upgrade is to um, remove 
a couple of um, bottlenecks or hydraulic constraints around the conveyance system. So what you are looking at is the Santa Clara River. Freeman diversion is at this location. And this green light indicates our conveyance system uh, where we are um, taking the um, water that's already been diverted. It gets treated through the uh, distilting basin and moves on to the uh, recharge basins. So one part of the project is, as I mentioned, to remove the hydraulic constraints. And we have targeted three uh, components here that I'm gonna talk about shortly. The second part of the project is to expand the conveyance system. And with that, I mean that the existing noble recharge basin will be connected to the ferro basin that was purchased by United a few years ago, um, thinking that we would need to expand our recharge capacities in the future. And now the future is here. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to talk about that, uh, that part of the project as well. So here is uh, another uh, look of the conveyance system. Now we have kind of like highlighted all the upgrades and optimizations that uh, need to happen along the conveyance system here. But as I said, we are targeting three components here uh, as part of phase one of the conveyance system upgrade. So here is a picture of the three barrel um, culvert that it is downstream of the desilting basin that needs to be replaced. This is the inverted siphon or a bridge near Satikoi uh, that is going to be replaced as well. And here is the um, Grand Canal and headworks that distributes water to the um, uh, groundwater recharge basins. So um, we implemented or constructed the Grand Canal and re re replaced the existing um, headworks and gates. These are the uh, construction uh, pictures uh, and uh, we are waiting for water. So um, next one is the fourth component of this project. And that is to connect Noble to Ferro Basin. And the reason for this interconnection is when we are getting into diversion of muddier water, as you saw in the river and Brian was talking about it, we would basically convey that water to Ferro Basin and allow some suspended solid settlement and increase again, the recharge. So the uh, total project cost, estimated cost is uh, $4.5 million. We have been fortunate to secure uh, two grant fundings, uh, a sustainable groundwater management SGM grant funding that allow us uh, to get $2.5 million, no local match is required. And the second one is uh, the uh, IRWMP round two grant funding and our project, the um, Noble to Ferro Connection has been endorsed by uh, Watershed Coalition of Ventura County. And so in total, in summary, we have secured 77% of the total project costs through this grant funding. And here is the timeline. As I mentioned, the uh, Grand Canal construction was completed in 2021. We are near completion of the design of the two hydraulic constraints that I mentioned. The goal is to complete the construction of these two components by um, April 2025. The um, undercrossing at Vineyard Avenue that allow us to connect Noble to Ferro is under planning. Uh, the design is going to follow and the construction um, should be included by the end of 2026 to meet the IRWMP uh, grant funding requirements. And with that, um, my presentation on this part is concluded. Thank you for your attention.